Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. This podcast is a conversation between two business partners, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. Join us for a lively conversation about all things interior design, from current projects, trade show experiences, worldwide travel, what's in, what's out, and all the challenges and wins they've had running their successful design business. Whether you're a seasoned interior designer, new to the industry, or a creative enthusiast, you will walk away with insightful information, newfound inspiration, and a smile on your face after listening to these two. And here they are, Joanne and Kelly. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 147 of Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. And today we are answering your design questions. It's a fan favorite and we're doing it again. So as JFK once said, a rising tide lifts all boats. And we agree with that sentiment. We've always been big sharers of information and we really enjoy brainstorming with our peers and really mentoring new designers. So in this episode, we are going to, uh, we already reached out to our audience on Instagram and Facebook, and we're going to answer all the questions that we got in. I actually we probably can't re- uh, answer all of them, but yeah. we we picked a, f- and a few. And some are design related, and some are business related. Which yeah, I love I love. Both yeah, of we those. said ask us yeah. anything, so yeah. we didn't know what we would we would get. We got so. some really good ones. This yeah. Time. yeah, yeah. So here we go. All right. So before we dive in, we're excited to welcome a new sponsor, Outrageous Interiors, which is a retail store here in Atlanta. They are family owned. They've been around for 34 years, yep. and they have four locations in Atlanta, uh, Alpharetta, Swanee, Marietta, and Kennesaw. It's a husband and wife team of Kurt and Patty Ghosh. They do an amazing job sourcing everything from furniture to rugs to lamps. Their showrooms are absolutely beautiful and They're very, very well styled. Yeah, very well styled. Um, they have a large inventory that they sell right off of their floor. So it's kind of a go-to shop for us when we need to you know, fill in something or need something in a pinch. Absolutely. And even though they have 15 very talented in-house designers, they're also very trade friendly and they are very active on social media, especially Instagram. So check them out at outrageousinteriors.com and you will be very impressed. Yes, they, they really are when we're like, uh oh, we need more of this or that. They're really the only place that, yeah. that will go and run in and see what we can get off their floor. And it's always good. Yeah, yeah qu- so good quality stuff and yep. and, uh, and great designers on, on staff. Yeah, really nice people. Yeah, very nice people. Check yeah. them out. So Check thanks, Outrageous out. Interiors. We appreciate you. All right, so let's dive in to our questions. The first one, and I don't, you know, we don't know most of these people. So shout out to everybody that reached out to us. And if I mispronounce your, your call name, I'm sorry. So Trudy Smith Designs says, "Do you, did you always want to be a bigger studio? Or did it just evolve? Do you ever want to go back to just Kelly and Joanne? I love this question. This is really funny (laughs) because it was Kelly and Joanne for the first, I think, two years. Right? Maybe two years. Really? It was only two years before we got, Maybe it was. we said, forget it, we hired Amy. It might have been three. (laughs) So we were, the, the, what made it all happen is we were schlepping a big rug out yes. of my van trying to put it in. So we we're like, we need to stop doing this. We need to get some help. So, and then since then, we've never had more than two people. So we Maybe are- Maybe two plus an intern. Yeah. Yeah. So we're really not a big firm. We're very small and mighty. As, I think um, it's a great question because yeah. the fact that you think that our, or it's coming across that our team is, we've got this big studio is funny to me a little bit like i mean we do conquer big stuff and a lot of it so i guess that's yeah. pretty impressive but yeah we're tiny and mighty i mean we're yeah, yeah we're, we're a max of five yeah. usually yeah just work really hard and the two girls that we have working for us are just amazing they do all the back end stuff but yeah i guess when you've got really four really hard working passionate people it's my, like a team of eight yeah because we are like two people we were we were going to a client um, house on Friday, and it was like it was a late appointment, and we don't like late appointments because we're just brain dead at the end of the day. But she was a doctor, and so we're heading over there, and we're driving, and it's Friday, and I turned to Joanne and I said, "Do you think that our peers work this hard?" <laughs> and she's like, "Hell no!" I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of them have young kids, like. 
I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like we are complete machines. And yeah, and maybe and we, we probably need to feed slow off, down, feed off of each other too. Yeah. Like if I feel like I'm slacking, oh no, 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 I, 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 I need to get, I need yeah. to get moving. So that is. So yeah. there's your answer, Trudy. I, no, we like it just the way it is. Mm -hmm. We never we, wanted to be a big firm. We, we never did, and we've talked, we, we talked very consciously about that. We never wanted to be this huge firm with like ten designers underneath us, and no, yeah. we just didn't. So, and we've agreed. we found our sweet spot, and that's where we are. And we've agreed on that. Yes. So it's all great. Yeah. All right. Okay. This next question yep. is from Danny's Life and Picks. And Danny is the house flipper. So he's always very interested in knowing about the trends. So, what he's asking, what is your favorite new design trend? And it's very easy for me is color. Mm. Finally, color is back. And I'm a big black and white fan. I yep. love black and white yep. with a punch of color, but it's nice to see a lot of color coming out because it was neutral for so long. So, yes. that's a really good. Good. And, and once again, because he is a house flipper, he needs to know the trends because that's what people are looking right, for. Right, right. So my other thing would probably, you know, mixing the antiques with, you know, having more wood furniture in with the other. But yes, in, for him, it would be go for some more color. Yes. For me, I mean, I totally agree with you, but I, I would also say, and this isn't a new trend because I think it's very, very iconic, but I love rattan. I love that it's just all over the place now. I, I love that the the selections have really changed, you know, expanded from just the oh. outdoor furniture that we knew from our grandma's house to to lighting and all the things that we've talked about, like we talked about on the High Point Trends um, show. Yeah. But I, yeah. I love it. I think it's so cool. Yeah. And then color it and oh, oh yeah. I love oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my answer. Okay. All right. Next. I'm not going to say this right, but it's V Demerit. She says, my shutters and trim are painted Dunn Edwards Swiss coffee. Should I use the same color for the walls? And that would be a no. That would be a no for, for me. me too. You yep. need some contrast. Mm -hmm. If the trim and the shutters are already that color, you want to you want that to pop out somehow. So I would go maybe just a little bit darker than what than what those are. Yeah, Swiss coffee's kind of light, so mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think you know, contrast is really good. We were just having this conversation with a client on Friday. Contrast is good. Yeah, because for a little while there, when the white was really, really coming out there, everything was white. Like the ceiling color, the walls, the trim was all the same. And it just, it's just too much, you know. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Okay. But thank you for your question. All right, next up is Rachel Moeller. And she says, how do you develop or create a color palette for a project? I think that's a great question. Yes. For me, and mm -hmm. probably you too, mm -hmm. uh, always starts with either a piece of art, the colors, mm -hmm. or a fabric. Mm -hmm. Generally, those are the two that I want to pull that color out from one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, I will preface that by saying that it's a lot of conversation with the client about what makes them happy, what what mm -hmm. is a lot of people have PTSD from certain colors. You know, like my mom does not like this, like a minty green because my grandmother painted like our entire house, her entire house growing up. Oh, that yeah. Color. People have and like- she cannot handle it. Something in their history that that is not a good, that they don't like that color. And so, yeah, we'll always ask yes. them. So that's kind yeah. of the basis. And yeah. then we love to have something to jump off of, but you wouldn't believe how we go into people's houses and- and it's a total clean slate. I mean, we like that because it's all in our hands to figure out. But at the same time, you know, like we just visited this client on Friday and she has the most amazing Persian art uh, and this one Iranian beautiful woman that's mm -hmm. in her dining room. And we're going to, she's like, that stays. So we're psyched because it has these beautiful slate it blues in it. Start. And we're like, and she's got these beautiful Persian rugs. So we're jumping off those rugs and that art and we're done for her. Yeah. But and the other thing I do remember too, is I always feel like before you pick a paint color, Pick whatever you're going to be using as your main, whether, like I said, whether it be a piece of art, a, a rug, a fabric, because you can always find a color to go yes, with that. Yes. But if you've already painted your walls, let's say a certain color, and that fabric doesn't really work, then you can't use that fabric that you liked. Right. Because you've already committed to the color. So I would say painting would be last after you have all of your furnishings in to before you pick those colors. Yes. Yes. And always pick them 
in the space. Absolutely. For sure. We yeah. never, yeah. people will say, well, could you just suggest something real quick? No, that's a no, because it might look great in my light and look horrible in yours. So yeah. lighting is, oh God, such a difference. We order a lot of the big eight and a half by 11 Sherwin-Williams samples and send them to our clients to tape up on the wall in dark and light spaces and yeah. see yeah. see how they're going to work. Um, yeah. And that's really helpful. So thank you, Rachel. Yeah. All right. This is from Tuck is my name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this is kind of going along with, with the same thing. What yep. is the perfect white paint for interior walls? Whites are so hard. Do you know I read somewhere once there are 900 versions of white in paint? I believe it. And so it's a it very, is really hard. It's a very good question. I yep. mean, I have a couple of favorites. Mm -hmm. um, we generally specify Sherwin Williams, but we do some Benjamin Moore. So the Benjamin Moore two that come to mind immediately, and I did use one in my house several years ago, is ivory white, and then there's dove white. And I those think are that's very a standard popular, love of it for everybody. Very is dove popular. White. They don't play tricks and whatever else. But those are my two Ben Moore ones. Um, here in the studio, this these walls are a, a Sherwin Williams Aspire White, which is isn't this Aspire White? I think it's Spare White. Spare. Spare White. Sorry, mm -hmm. Rachel and everybody at Sherwin Williams. <laughs> Spare, um, Spare White. White. But yeah, that was the first time we used this. And I really, really it's, like it's it. It's a really good color. Soji White, I feel like I've been specifying a lot mm -hmm. lately because it's it's not, it has it doesn't have any of that gray in it. It has a little bit of like a tan, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of one of those. It two. looks very bright in the sun, but it takes on that kind of little yeah. bit of color in the dark corners, yeah. which is nice. And then I feel like we're almost always using Pure White for trim. And alabaster for walls, I think. Greek you, Villa too. Greek Villa is another favorite. Those are all Sean Williams. Yeah, you can't mm -hmm. go wrong. But yeah, it's hard. Summer, what I would stay away from for walls is there's some really reflect, like highly reflective white or like really bright ones that are just glaring and you need Not to soften it and yeah. tone it down. Well, you know, Sherwin Williams does have that like sticker program now. Mm -hmm. You can order, if you're not working with us, you can order these and stick them on the wall and you need to look at them at different times of the day because they change the light changes or put them on different walls. That definitely help. Yeah. Definitely. But it's funny, we used to, I mean, never would we paint like a whole house white. We're, we're the color girls. You know, we would never do that. But I would do that now. <laughs> I I just, maybe it's yeah. because we do a lot more original art. We focus so much on art now and it looks yeah. so great on white walls. Or maybe it's just like pandemic driven, like everybody yeah. just needs a cleanse. <laughs> but I do love color in some rooms like a library yes, yes i would you know i think libraries need to be more moody or whatever and and bathrooms i would like it in a bathroom if, if they won't do wallpaper yes yeah I nobody carve those did out. anybody like, ask us about wallpaper oh one somebody asked us about the stick we'll get mm -hmm. to that but mm -hmm. but yeah i mean we're obsessed with wallpaper but we'll get yeah. to that later yeah. okay so jessica deuce was next and she said are two islands in or out so she's referring to a kitchen and you may not have even seen this like in your in your town or in your if you you got to have a darn big kitchen you got to have a darn big kitchen and we see them a lot in we have so many great show houses in in atlanta with atlanta homes and lifestyles flower magazine etc um i'm torn i i think if i had a mega kitchen i wouldn't mind it because i feel like one is for for sitting and conversing and you know keeping the the cook happy or company mm -hmm. and then the other one is purely utilitarian but so i don't mind it but it's i guess the only time that i would want to do it if it was so big yeah that one island would look stupid you know like right. one island would look so big so it has to be pretty big i think for me to separate it if it was just maybe i'd probably go for the bigger island but we rarely see, it's not like they're two little islands. They're always two big ones. Yeah. So it's a, I'm on the fence, Jessica. I I, no, I don't know if it's in or out. I think it's just. I don't just, think so either. I don't I think, think it's a, like a trend. I think it's either you have the space. If I was a big want... cook and I had a massive family and a massive house all day long, I would do that. Yeah. Because it just functionally, I think it makes sense. And aesthetically, it's it's it can be really pretty. But I wouldn't like rush to do it because. It's a trend. I was building a house and I thought it was a trend. Yeah. That would be a no for me. Yeah. There's your answer, Jessica. Okay. There we go. So, <laughs> all, right. all right. Christine Conti asks, what's the one thing you did for your company that makes you think, oh man, I wish we had done this so much sooner. Game changer. That is such a good question. Christine, love it. 
Yeah, because a lot of people, you know, we have each other. So that always really helps yeah. because I might come up with an idea and Kelly will think about it for a minute and be like, yeah, maybe we, we're, we're bolder together, I have to, I have to sure. say. So we've <laughs> done sure. we've done a lot of things that we didn't wait too long, but there is one. Go ahead. Video. Yeah. 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 I will say, okay, we've been in business for 17 years, at least 10 years ago. Yes. Maybe our first, you know, we we're big on coaches and always learning and continuing education. And they said to us, get on video. Google loves video. Um, it'll yeah. just bolster your SEO. People want to get, you know, up close and personal with you. And we were like, Eek, no, we're and dead. for some reason, like there wasn't one of us going, come on, we need to do it. Yeah. Like, we, we were both kind of hesitant. Oh, I'm like, oh no, I, I yeah. can't. I'm fat. I, I'm ugly. And, I can't. I can't do it. I, and I do remember, you know, now that TikTok is really big, that's even more video. And right. even if you're not on that platform, you still need to be doing it. So when Julianne Taylor was a guest, yes, we talked a lot about yeah. the video and she's very big on TikTok. And she's just said, do it scared. I love that. And I love that because it, you know, and another person, Wendy Walshuk, mm -hmm. had said, what are you so afraid of doing video for? People see your face and they see you talking. That's just what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, true. You're, just, you're not used it's to not seeing like yourself. not like hiding under a rock and yeah. coming out for the They're, first time. Right. They already know what you look like. They already know what you, <laughs> you know, your, how you talk. So it's why would you be, why would it be any difference? Because we want to judge ourselves. Right. Totally. But I... Clearly, we've gotten over it because here we are. Here we are. But it all it took us five years into our podcast to be yeah, on video. Yeah. So whatever, we're here. Um, but I will say in in conjunction with that, we are yes people. We jump, we say, we're not afraid. We yeah. we're like we yeah. said, we're we're better together. But um I can honestly say, looking back, there isn't a whole lot that no. I can say, man, we missed the boat on that or we really screwed up because we, started, we didn't do that. We started coaching early on, which you need to really do it mm -hmm. early on, but you, but continue it when you're kind of like in a little slump. So we've been really good about that. We've always, another thing that we try to tell people if you if you want to up your game is get the professional photography on your website. Oh, for sure. Just pay up and pay for it. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, there's times... Like I can think of the things that we did that were game changers that we said yes to. And that was when back in 2008, when the recession, first recession hit us and landlords were dying, we actually got an uh, office because we were like, mm -hmm. we're going to this, we're in, we're in the driving seat now for the first time. Like, let's do it. So we got an office. We did things kind of where some people might think it was backwards, but it was great for us. You know, yeah. we got our office then and we've had office space ever since. We've never worked from home in well, the first two years we did. The first two years we did. Yeah. yeah. But since then. Yeah. Um, what other game changers? Um, starting this podcast. I mean, yeah, that was just a fluke idea at one of our Panera days. And mm -hmm. we've got, you know, we've always invested in industry events, design mm -hmm. influencers conference and high point. And those are all educate, you know, keep educating yourself. Don't ever feel like, oh, I don't have enough money to do that or whatever. Something will come out of it and take out a loan if you need to. We did. We did. We when we decided to completely rebrand and revamp our website, um how many years ago was that? Four? Mm -hmm. We took out a line of credit. We were like why, why this is going to be a big investment. Let's not tap into our cash. This is what these things are for. And then, you know, we got a few good jobs like the next year. We just paid it off. But that was a great, I thought that was a great move. You can't you know? always wait till you have the exact amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then it make, it pushes you harder. We got to pay that off. We gotta, yeah. We got so, yeah. 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 But I would say, Christine, probably getting on video was probably the yeah. thing that we lagged. I mean, we, we were like doing it, but we didn't jump in. And now yeah. we're all about stories and reels and being here with you on the podcast. And, and we're, you know, we're not afraid anymore, but yeah, yeah, we could even still do it more. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Running a business here at full speed. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. okay. The next question is from Donna Thomas. What do you think of stick on wallpaper? Very good question. We've never really specified it. We never have. I think it's great for people who live in apartments or who are in a temporary situation, but I yes. know people use it, you know, for other things. I just... Um, I would say kids' rooms, dorm rooms, temporary spaces. If you're not sh 
sure what your design aesthetic is maybe and you just want to try something funky cool like maybe maybe a home office I, I mean what have you got to lose you know yeah. a real uh, wallpaper wallpaper is kind of more of an investment you gotta it's have to be properly you know professionally installed and wallpapers you know generally not well the only thing and i don't and i'm not a wallpaper installer but i know like from my you know, my days of contact paper in the mm -hmm. drawers and that's the bubbling contact and sticking paper. and whatever, I, you know, maybe they've made it in a way where it doesn't do that. I'm sure. Um, yeah. But that would be my only thing. I'm not just sure about, I know it can come right off, but if you prime your walls correctly and put up wallpaper, mm -hmm. it should come down very easily. Very so. easily. So I guess our answer, Donna, is it probably wouldn't be our go-to, but it definitely has its place and i i wouldn't i wouldn't turn a cheek to it i think it definitely yeah. has its place and is a good thing mm -hmm. but we kind of pr prefer the more formal way of wallpaper yeah yeah that's good okay nancy prohaska every time we do these <laughs> these shows she asks questions and i love that about her so she reached out and she always has great questions so how does one begin updating their home is the first step new paint colors, then furniture, or is it room by room? How do we begin? Do we go with what is current or po and popular or what we love and what we're comfortable with? First of all, love what, you're, what you love and what you're comfortable with. Yes. Um, we but, recently spoke to the Marietta Garden Club last week um, on design trends and design in general. And this one, this one lady said, if I'm going to paint my house for the very last time in my life, what color should I paint it? And I said, whatever makes you happy. And they were all shocked. They were all, yeah, really? they were, really? they thought really? we were going to come up with like this whole palette of like trendy colors. But I mean, yeah, that's I mean, a broad answer, of course. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go light, of course, there's so many different ones and mm -hmm. we can help you pick that. But if somebody really likes dark walls, do it. Yeah. But I would say if I was, okay, so we have a client right now whose house was like completely done back in like 16 years ago. And now it's just, it's dated. just, it's, it's just so dated. dated. It's dated. I, I, I hate it, but it's dated. So we're, ta and she doesn't have money to just like redesign our entire house. So we started with paint and we updated all of her colors. And that in and of itself, because so now we've gone back, but that in and of itself was amazing. Now we've come, we're coming back, and the very first thing we're doing is tackling her lighting, updating all of her lighting. So getting kind of those bones things changed up is yeah. is going to help her. And then we're tackling, um, we're kind of just we're lightening and brightening. We took down but all I, of her heavy, heavy window treatments. I do like the room by room. I mean, depending on your budget. But I would rather, and we've told this to people all the time, I'd rather get a room done to perfection than put a little bit in this room and a little bit in that room. Make that room awesome and right. then move to the next room. Don't right. try to like sprinkle things everywhere to make everything okay. Just take your time and do it one room at a time. And then when it's, once it's done, move on to the next one. I completely agree. But don't you think that you should get kind of like your... Your, oh, if you've got your, a house your bones has, first, your yes. your the base done first because you're going to have this gem sitting in the middle of oh yeah paint for sure right yeah paint for sure so um what else did you ask how do we begin do we go with okay do we go with what's current and popular or what we love and comfortable with I mean I I think you should do a little bit of both I mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't jump into that investment without some research. Yeah, you know, or hiring a, a design like we have a design for a day program where clients it's kind of a concierge service where clients hire us for four hours to come to their home and we just dive into whatever the challenge is for that day. And so relying on, you know, doing something like that will I think <clears throat> and this is probably common sense is just on your big pieces. Keep those neutral and then pillows like change out your pillows so if right now mm -hmm. you know if chevron's popular and you want a chevron pillow that's great because in another year or two you're probably gonna be tired of it anyway so that's mm -hmm. easy enough to switch so i think when it comes to the trends doing things that are not so so you know things that are a little more temporary mm -hmm. is where you can throw those in but and then there's some things that just i don't care what they are mm -hmm. 12 14 years you're going to be tired of it it's true 
It it just it's is true. That we way. we have a lot of like, a lot of actually men client or the husbands will yeah. say, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's still perfectly fine. Okay, true. But do you like it? I mean, that's the bottom line. Like, yeah. Can you honestly say that you still love that? Because if you say yes, then we're good. It's staying. Well, but just want generally they're yeah. like, uh, but no, but I paid a lot for it. Well, do you like it? You know, yeah. <laughs> is it? It served you well. Yes. Is it going to be, are we forcing this entire design in this entire house because you want to keep that one chair, or that one rug that you're, you, you spend a lot of money on or that you're, yeah. that you're mother-in-law who's passed gave to you, you know? Yeah. You have to decide, you know, some of those things. And there are some things that are, you know, emotional to people of and we'll try to definitely work of around course. them. But, Always. but sometimes it's just, it's just, it's lived its life. It looks worn. It looks tired. You want to freshen up. Mm -hmm. Let it go, people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got one more. Mm. This is a big one. Stan the Man says, what is your favorite project and why? I don't even know what you're going to say. I uh, I have one in my I head. I have a couple in my head. Yeah. Well, go, go ahead. ahead. And I'll say no, you go first. It, you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Mine is, and actually it's a recent one. It's uh, a client who we've worked with before who decided that she wanted to stay in her house. Do you know who I'm talking about right now? You don't no, know. Keep yet. talking. Okay, I'll keep talking. Um, wanted to stay in their house. Is where they raised their family. Oh, of course. And but they really wanted more of a modern vibe. And she was a little bit worried because the house is kind of like your typical Atlanta traditional home. So the kind of you walk in, you've got the dining room to the left, you got the living room to the right. The you know, mm -hmm. it's all kind of very similar. So she hired us to um, help her redesign this. We got an architect. We got a contractor. And it's actually going to be featured in Atlanta Home Magazine mm -hmm. um, in the early part of next year. I'm yes. not sure it's if they only it's publish the four edition, times a year. So it'll so come out maybe March. Yeah. Um, but it was so great because it just it lets you see that you don't necessarily have to match the inside to the outside. And Good she point. was just one of those people that just I love my home, but I just want to. I want it to be more of us. And that's exactly what she did. But and she was so brave. She was. She just, really did some cool she stuff. She did some very cool stuff. She was a pleasure to work with. It's just one of those projects that, you know, I think when, you know, when we're all done and ready to let it go, that's one that just will stick. Will always. We'll, yes. there's, there's so many good ones. So many good ones. But that one will just stick with me because that was something we've never done before and it worked. Yes. I agree with you 100%. I, I was thinking about this and I have to say... Some of my favorites are the multifamily projects that we've worked on because they've been big and sometimes they've been scary and I they've challenged us and I've always been really proud of the final um, uh, project or product. But two come to mind oh, that were, know exactly. that were yeah. challenging. One was a, and they're on our website, you can go see them. One was for a multifamily community where they wanted a massive amenity place, dog park slash outdoor um, fun slash tennis on top of a massive parking garage. And when we got there, it was a slab of concrete for sure. And it turned into the coolest, yeah. the coolest space with bright colors and great outdoor furniture and sail shades covering certain areas and a great dog park. And it just, do, yeah, there was a lot of research like d dog park. We had never figured that out, but yeah. thank goodness to yeah. um, Vern Yip's husband, Craig Coach, Coach, Cook, Cock. Cook, Cook. I think that's how he pronounces it. He, he owns a, um, a doggy daycare, a few of mm -hmm. them. And so we asked him and he, he turned us on to a place that had the dog toys. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of fun to do. It's a little scary, but it's fun to kind of do something different. Oh, step and outside then, your box. You'll do your best work. And then when it was done, I was like, very proud of that. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool yeah. place. And then yeah. the second one that was kind of similar to that was a massive leasing center that when we walked into it was a concrete shell of a prior restaurant. And it was a two-year project because COVID hit us right in the middle. And it just turned out to be the most glamorous. Mm -hmm. It looks like a luxury hotel w lobby when you walk in. And I will forever love that. Love that space and that project. 
But when we first started it, we were kind of like, wow, okay, we got to wrap our heads around this one. This is not our everyday yeah. everyday design. So I like the challenging ones mm -hmm. that, you know. And we had a great architect who really kind of helped, helped us through. And I think that really made a difference mm -hmm. uh, because everybody has their place, but it was just nice to work with these other, you know, people we had never worked with before. And well, we learned, love a we collaborative a team. We yeah. learned a lot. I mean, we had a great contractor, a great architect, the management team of the owners and it all in us. And it was great. Yeah. Collaborative. Yeah, we, we didn't really have any hiccups. Yeah. So. All right. So we, we do we have a little bit more time. Um, we're really close to the end. Okay. You can say one more. Okay. I was just going to say one more that um, was just very unique was we designed a uh, a mobile home. Oh, Not a yeah. mobile home. It was a. It was an, an old RV, RV. An yeah. RV for a woman who wanted to create this RV to go to Southern, the Southern colleges uh, for the sororities and she had white dresses in there and all the things that you need for sororities and so it was in such bad shape it was completely gutted out yep we put little uh we put um we put dressing rooms in there but the we flooring had... wasn't even really popular then what about what flooring am LVP? i talking lvp yeah okay. like it wasn't as popular but we got put that in there yeah. we put um the t the tin um tiles up in the roof right the and dressing rooms yep. and and the whole yeah. rv was wrapped it was a, it was a mobile boutique Traveling to all of the SEC schools, aiming, you know, focusing on the sororities and all the things that you need for rush and you need for bid day and you need for, you know, all yeah. those things. And it was the cute, it was the, it was we wrapped, it was wrapped on the outside with her logo and, and all that. It was and, just fun. It was fun. Yeah. But yeah. when we first saw it, of course, it was this. Mm, dumpy bad. thing and we were like wow what are well, we that, that's why you see like these people that buy these airstreams that yes. want to like it's just you know it's kind of a fun uh it, it's just a novelty thing I yes guess. yes yeah but, but yeah that, the dressing rooms were great yeah yeah it was yeah we had clothes jewelry yeah. you know the whole nine yards it was fun yeah. yeah it was really fun so but those are great questions and we hope maybe those are shedding some light for for anybody out there who's curious about mm -hmm. our uh design business and yeah i think we how have other designers operate th there's another podcast we did on our on white colors and i know we've done blogs on white white paint colors mm -hmm. so if you want to look look at those there's some real specifics with the numbers so you can see what we're talking about yeah there's uh, we have a blog from years ago that started out what's the color of the white house yeah yeah so you can yeah. look that up yeah. all right ready for quotes yes okay I'm going to do the funny one okay? because I know you all can relate to this. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see an iPad at a cash register, I know I'm about to tip for something that I've never had to tip for before. <laughs> Is that so true? It's so I'm like, true. they're asking me for a tip. I'm at Panera. Like, do I do this? And then, you know. I have to get my own food. Like, I, I'm getting my own drink. I usually yeah. do it. I'm a sucker. I feel like, you know, yeah. they're working hard. They showed up. So many places sure. don't it's, even it's, have customers. It's you know, the iPad. I mean, it people is, to work there. It's the iPad. It's the yeah. iPad. As yeah. soon as I see it, I'm like, yeah. oh, man, here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The serious quote. Okay. Be that person who roots for others, who tells a stranger they look amazing and encourages others to believe in themselves and their dreams. That's so true. So did you notice sometimes like if you, even if I'm at Publix or something and I'll give a compliment to the, to cash the lady, cashier, lady. cashier or something I like you ever, like they get, they get so like excited. Like you kind of make their day. Yeah. I am that person. I, I am totally that person. That. I will compliment all the day long. And yeah, people like freak out. Like if you yeah. say, wow, your eyes are stunning. You know, they're like, yeah, wow. And, like, yeah. did anybody ever and, tell and, you that before? You know, and, it just, probably, and then it makes feel you feel good well, that you, you made that feel good. That it stays with them all day. That yeah. it really kind of, so just do it. It's so, yeah. so nice. I will never forget this as long as I live. I was, I had run into Target. I was having a bad day and I, somebody was watching me and which kind of freaks me out. But, and I just knew, knew that I had, you know, resting bitch face on my face, right? Probably. And so I get back to my car after my, my trip and there's a note on my windshield with a real rose and it, it looked like it had been kind of ripped off. It was just a you know, piece of paper that somebody mm -hmm. just, it wasn't like a planned thing. It didn't seem like, and it said something like, I, I have it on my, on my bullet board smile. upstairs, S smile, smile, you're beautiful or something like that. And I, and I'm looking around like, okay, okay, this is really <laughs> freaky, but it just, I was like, 
wow. At first I felt bad. Like clearly that person saw me and was like, that girl's having a bad day. But yeah. I mean, instantly, well, I, I have to be happy the rest of the day. This person just did the most, the nicest thing for me. I know. So I still think of it. It was years ago. Oh, but it would kill me to really... want to know who it was. I know, right? Can't you and... go back to Target and let them look at the, um, like... <laughs> I should have. I totally should have. The... Don't think I didn't look around yeah, like, who yeah. is the weirdo? But thank you for being so weird and loving. Maybe it was a that. woman who had gotten flowers and then yeah. wanted to give one away. Maybe. Hmm. Anyway. All right. Thank you, Outrageous Interiors, for... Uh, sponsoring this episode and we really appreciate you and if you're listening um, please remember that now you can watch us on YouTube if you want to and subscribe to our channel because we're trying to beef up those listeners and, or watchers as we say yeah yeah okay thanks for listening everybody All right. bye bye join Joanne and Kelly for a new episode every other Friday as they continue to explore the nuances of the interior design business with the goal of informing inspiring and entertaining their listeners. See their work at kendrak-cole.com and engage with them on Facebook and Instagram at kendrakcole.